Good morning, family. Welcome back. So we got some glorious rain yesterday. I was very happy. It mostly rained on and off all day, which was great. We really, really needed it. Everything got a good soaking. I put all the house plants outside so they could get a nice bath and a good rain soaking. There's just something different between rain and like watering them from like filtered water from, um, you know, the sink or the fridge or whatever. They just they just do better when they get rainwater. I'm, I, everything does, you know, when we have like big gardens and, you know, compared to like watering with the hose compared to like when it used to rain, <laughs> um, it was just, uh, it's, it's just a million times better for them. The plants just do so much better. So we were really happy to get that. It was Sunday. So you won't see this until Tuesday, but I'm recording this on Monday. It's a whole thing. It's, you know, you live back in time. <laughs> But it was Sunday, so it was really nice. We just kind of laid low, watched some football, hung out with the kids. We carved pumpkins. Um, carved, the kids carved pumpkins? Oh, wait. <laughs> never mind. I mean, we carved their pumpkins? Yeah, like the kids started out carving pumpkins, and that lasted all of what? Maybe 45 seconds before they were out doing something else. They got bored with it. <laughs> so we carved their pumpkins. Um, but, yeah, it was just a nice, quiet day. Hey, Ivory. Thank you. Um, it was a nice quiet day. We just relaxed, listened to the rain, enjoyed it, got our farm work done before the rain started in the morning, and then, yeah, just chilled. So we are back at it today. We've got regular chores to do, and we need to move cows, and I think, do we need to move the sheep today? Because they're in the way, so we need to move the sheep today, and I have something special to show you. So let's get regular chores done, and then we'll, uh, we'll head over and see our little surprise. So we are actually on our last batch of birds in the brooder, which is crazy. And they are moving out this, the end of this week. We're taking birds to the processor on Friday, and then we can move them out to the schooners anytime after that. So probably Friday or Saturday, we'll get them moved out. So um, basically I'm not gonna have any chickens in this barn. So I'd kind of like to get everything out of there and not have a bunch of chickens that I have to feed. So I still have those two little chickens, the two that I have left that didn't die, um, of the little layers that I bought, the little fancy layers that I bought. So I am actually gonna put their cage in the chicken coop and leave them in there for a week or two with food and water, of course. And so they can just kind of like home to this area. And then after that, I can let them out with all the other chickens. I have found that this is the best way to kind of like introduce everybody is keep the smaller chickens, you know, like caged up in the area that the chickens are so they're safe, but everybody can just kind of get used to each other and then they can kind of home to their area. So that's what we're gonna do right now real quick. We're just gonna pop them over. Just, I'm just tired of feeding them out there, so. I'd like to get that started as soon as possible. So we're gonna put the cage in there and then we'll put the chickens in there with their food and water and just let them be for a week or so.
All right, well, they are moved, so I'm glad that is done. We're going to head over to the dairy barn real quick and get everybody there taken care of. So I've said it before. And I'll say it again. <laughs> I will say it again because it's the truth and it's just what we deal with. Farming is very unpredictable. It's a lot of repetitive stuff, but also unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you get into this like monotonous sort of like, this is what we do every day, every day, every day, every day. And, and then, then something, something comes something. to just slap the crap out of you <laughs> and say, here's something new. Here's something new. And sometimes it's a good thing. And sometimes it's a bad thing. Most of the time it's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I felt like more often than not, it can be like a bad thing. But this time it was a good thing. So if you remember past videos, we talked about our cow, Annabelle, who we got. She was supposed to be uh, friendly. She was supposed to be in milk. She was supposed to be bred, et cetera, et cetera. Not any of those things. We were fairly certain that she wasn't bred. She was supposed to calve in early September, no calving. So we kind of gave up, figured we'd just breed her. We got Buttercup, you know, because we wanted a cow that was close to milking, et cetera, et cetera. So about a week and a half ago, <coughs> excuse me, about a week and a half ago, I noticed that Annabelle had an udder. And I thought, well, that's interesting, but animals can develop udders at any time in their pregnancy. So I had no idea, you know, when she was going to calve. And then we came home last week. What? Thursday night. Thursday night, we came home and Annabelle didn't come up for feed. And that's very unlike her. They all always come up for feed. See, I told you. <laughs> um, Annabelle didn't come up for feed and we thought, uh-oh, you know, it's either a good thing or a bad thing. So we went out to the field to look for her and she was in labor out in the middle of the field. She already had part of the um, sack out and what we thought was a hoof. We could kind of see, we couldn't really tell. So we watched her, our neighbor who has had cows before. Now I've had goats for years, 15 years, pretty familiar with calving, but, or kidding, birthing, but I've never had, <laughs> you can hold it for me. You weren't looking at it. I am looking at it. You're looking over there. I'm looking all over the place. Anyways, I've never had, obviously, a cow, you know, calf. So he came up just to kind of lend assistance if we needed it, etc. And she, within about 45 minutes, give or take, about an hour, had it out, had it cleaning it up, doing all the things. So we welcomed a new little baby to our farm. Hey, baby, baby. He's resting. Hi, mama. How you doing? But everybody is doing good. Um, he's been nursing like a champ. We've seen him. He's up and about. It is a bull calf, which is no big deal. It's, it's not a problem. Uh, Ella has named him Tim because why wouldn't our baby bull calf be named Tim? And uh, yeah, we have a new calf. So over the next couple of days, we are going to get a milk stand set up. We kind of weren't prepared because we didn't know that she was going to calve already. Um, so we're going to get a milk stand set up and get her hopefully into the stand and be able to get some milk out of her. But obviously we don't know how she's going to be in the milk stand. This is our cow that isn't exactly like the most friendly. She's not awful, but she may be used to the milk stand. You know, I mean, if she was milked at the dairy, obviously that's something that she is going to be used to. We're ordering a milk machine. I was going to just hand milk and Ryan put the kibosh on that like right away because at within six months from now we're gonna have five goats and two cows in milk and he's like you're not hand milking all those animals because we don't have time so i get a milk machine <laughs> so we're gonna order a milk machine i get a call how terrible. how terrible i don't mind hand milking it's very it's very peaceful for me to hand milk uh well as long as everybody's doing what they need to and being you know being good little animals but um it is very peaceful i i love i do love milking my animals so um, yeah, but we've got to figure out where to put a milk stand 
in here that a cow can get in and out of easily. And um, yeah, we just don't know. We're not sure. We're kind of, I don't know, not overwhelmed. What's the right word about trying to find a milk place for the milk stand? <laughs> we just don't know where to put That's it. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, we kind of just don't know where to put it. I mean, we could put it like here, right, in this kind of vicinity, which wouldn't be bad because the feed is there, the power is there, there's lights right there, so it would be fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just don't know. But then do we want to block off like that area of being able to get into the barn? Then that would mean we can't pull like tractors or trucks or whatever in here. So I feel like it almost would be better if we did it in like a stall. Um, you know, yeah, we got, we have some decisions to make. So anyways, we have a new baby and he's so cute. Oh my God. I'll put some other videos. He's not doing anything right now, but I have some videos of him up. So I'll insert those and uh, you can check those out and we're going to get to the rest of chores. I got it, mom. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Come on. Come on. Alice, come. Is that the full? Is that the full, mommy? The full? Yeah. What do you mean? The baby one is the foal? Is, uh, no, it's not a foal, it's a calf. I'm sorry. I know calf. what you meant. Yeah. And is the mama one the cow? Yeah. Uh, hello, calf. Oh, thanks, Annabelle. to do the whole letting my chickens carve a pumpkin thing. <laughs> I don't know, it looked fun. So I thought I'd see what they do. So I've got it. There it is. So I started it. I think I did too much though. I think you're only supposed to do like a little hole. Whatever. So we'll see how well they do. Um, I just put it out here and I haven't let them out yet. So we'll see how they do. I'll try and get video of it if um, if I see him out here, I might take my extra phone and get the video on it and see what <laughs> happens, see if they go for it. We'll see. Happy Halloween, right? <laughs> Anyways, having the suck, having the sheep in front of the schooners is actually working out really well. They did a pretty good job on this pasture paddock before the schooners. Now, um, it's taken them a little bit longer. I think there was just a lot. 
<laughs> I wish you could see on the other side of the camera. Do you know what it's like to work with somebody who's literally mentally like a 12 year old? I mean, honestly, that's, that's what I'm working with. Ella? She's 12? I thought she was four. <laughs> mentally a 12 year old. Keeps life fun. That's why I married you, babe. Don't touch me. <laughs> see? See what I mean? Come on, cows. Come on, cows. There you go. Good job. Good cows. Good cows. Good job, Joe. Come on. Good job. Good job, cows. 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 <clears throat> Come on, cows. Good job, good cows. So I had somebody actually in one of my groups the other day ask me about, they were talking about, you know, hot fencing, electric fencing, and I just said that, you know, we use single strand and this fiberglass step and post, plastic step and post, and I actually love it. It was a little bit difficult in the beginning until I kind of really figured out how it needed to go. And now, I mean, honestly, we can move these cows within, especially with both of us, half an hour, 45 minutes max. So basically, if you are wanting to use electric fencing, we use single strand for the cows, double strand for the goats and the sheep. What we do, we have two sets of fencing like m supplies, right? So each paddock, the goats have two sets, the cows have two sets, and the sheep all have two sets of fencing supplies that we can use for each of them. So they can be in one paddock while we set up the next one and then turn them out into it, you know, move them over and then take down the old one. So basically what we do is we build the paddock with the posts, make a square, whatever shape it is that you're wanting to do, build it with your posts, get them in line, you know, pick a point, make your line, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just run your wire through it and it's done. I mean, it is really like this single strand. We used to use the net fences, you know, we used to haul those 164, um, foot 48 inch net fences for the goats and we would move them weekly and it was awful we hated those net fences so when we moved here and we decided to go ahead and try to do the single strand wire i am so happy that we did it is awesome it's easy they're light the reels are light the posts are light and it keeps i mean it goes up and it goes down and we're done so if you, you know, if this is the way that you want to go, don't make it any harder than it is. Run your posts in the paddock shape that you want and then run your wire around it. And uh, yeah. We are out. We got the cows moved. Ella off to school and we are out moving the sheep. So we've got the paddock all set up, put the posts all up. Like I was saying earlier, the best thing that I found to do, put all your posts up in the shape that you want and then run your wire. It makes it so much easier um, to do and you just walk through it. So we've got all the posts up in the paddock shape that we want. We're still running along side of the chicken pasture. The chickens run in this area and then we've got the sheep over here and then we'll, we'll run them back through and up around the pond again. So we're going to get the wire run and then we'll get these guys, their little hot thing moved over and the sheep moved over. I just want to get it. Yeah.
All right, well, everybody is moved, everybody's situated. We're gonna head in and have a snack, get uh, Emma to bed. She's actually in the car because uh, Ryan took her with him to go to school, take Ella to school. So she just hangs out and it's easier just to leave her in there instead of getting her out. She's fine, she's happy in there, it's warm. It's a little chilly out today, so she doesn't do well with the cold. <laughs> So uh, she's good in there. So yeah, anyways, the sheep are moved. Everybody's happy with their fresh new pastures. We are gonna head in and uh, just do some office work and relax for the rest of the day. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.